So, what should you do when switching from an Nvidia card, let's say an older one that consumes less power like the 10 series or the 20 series to a new AMD card like the 7900 XTX? I picked the 7900 XTX as this is the most powerful GPU in the current AMD lineup. I hope this will be helpful and ease the fear of changing GPU vendors regardless of the camp you want to switch to. In this video I'll be sharing what I think is important to do and some pointers to check if you may encounter issues after the change. Before we go into more details, consider subscribing to the channel to help it grow. When switching to a new GPU, it is important to check the power requirements and see what the model manufacturer vendor recommends. If you meet the minimum requirements, make sure to use separate power cables, don't daisy chain them, as your new GPU may underperform due to lack of power. This applies to any vendor, as seen here for the new NVIDIA connector. In rare occasions, daisy chaining cables may lead to a black screen or the computer may switch off due to the lack of power provided to the GPU or may even trigger the overall current protection. Also, I would stick to the cables that came with the PSU as those are designed specifically for it and some aftermarket ones may lack quality control. Another important thing is to make sure that the cables are plugged in properly. If your current PSU doesn't meet the requirement, consider a good PSU, check the PSU Call this list. Make sure to do proper research on the internet for the model you wish to buy. Consider the CPU power usage and also 100 watts for the other components. A good PSU is one of the best investments you can do when it comes to your PC. Before switching to the new GPU, make sure to download the latest chipset and display drivers so that you can install after you make the swap. You can navigate to the Intel or in my case AMD website and search for the latest ones. Make sure to move them on a USB stick. After swapping to a new GPU, my recommendation is to do a clean install of Windows. This way all the software you use and all games will be installed for the new GPU, thus avoiding unknown settings stored for the previous one that need to be updated. Do not reinstall Windows from Windows, avoid this, as this way there may be traces and configs left from the old GPU. A better alternative, if you choose not to do a clean Windows installation, is to go into safe mode and use Display Driver Uninstaller. Just search for it on Google and download it. Using DDU in safe mode, just select the driver that you want to remove and click Clean and Shut Down to install the new GPU or clean and restart if you want to play it safe when installing a newer driver version. After this step, regardless if it's a clean Windows installation or you use DDU in safe mode, my recommendation is to disconnect from the internet and install the chipset drivers that you previously downloaded. After Windows restart, let's move to the display driver. When installing Adrenaline, we have three options to choose from full installation, minimal installation and driver only. In rare occasions when choosing full installation and after installing another software that can control the RGB on your GPU or tune the GPU clocks, for example the one from the motherboard manufacturers like Gigabyte Control Center, MSI Center or Asus Armory Crate or any other software similar may lead to system instability and occasional crashes. In some few rare occasions, as the full installation has the performance matrix for each game you play and the possibility to tune the GPU, you may experience game starters, even though you don't have any other software that can interact with your GPU. In that case, I recommend to use minimal installation. Think of minimal installation to be like NVIDIA graphics driver that can adjust the GPU settings using the NVIDIA control panel, but with the same look as in the Adrenaline full installation as you can see now on the screen. Another recommendation from my part is to remove the driver updates from Windows Updates using Local Group Policy Editor. To do so, under Computer Configuration, click on Administrative Templates. After that, look for Windows Components. Scroll down until you see Windows Updates and click on that. And finally, click on Manage Updates offered from Windows Updates. Now you should have a few policies displayed. Click on Do not include drivers with Windows Update. 
right click on it and edit or simply double click. In the pop-up window you have three options, just click on disable and apply. And there you go, no more driver updates with Windows updates. In some rare occasion, if your CPU has an iGPU, you may need to disable it, as this may cause issues as reported by some people on Reddit. Doing so, I recommend disabling it from BIOS. To disable the integrated GPU, you need to go to Advanced, to NB Configuration and you have here Integrated Graphics. What are shown here applies to ASUS motherboards, at least the ROG Strix versions, for AMD. Sometimes when using a dual monitor setup, you may have stutters in games. This may happen when you have something running on the other screen. If you encounter this issue, my recommendation is to switch from two monitors to one, meaning you can disable the second display to see if you still have this issue. So after switching from two displays to one, my recommendation is to close the game and restart it. If you are experiencing low frame rates or starters, I recommend to disable everything in the graphics settings and give that a try. If that fixes the issue, just enable one by one the settings that you need, until you have the culprit. If you are using one display and you still have issues in game, you may need to disable hardware acceleration in the apps that run in the background. For example, if you use Discord, you can disable it from here. Or if Firefox runs something in the background, like videos, you can actually disable the hardware acceleration from here. Another culprit for instability can be the memory sticks. The speeds that are advertised on the box are actually obtained through overclocking. Let me show you. In BIOS, we can see the default memory frequency, and for these kits, it's 4800. Every memory kit out there has an overclocked profile stored on them. To activate the profile stored, you have to check the description provided and choose the appropriate one from the dropdown. Once we select the profile, we will see that the frequency advertised on the box is displayed in the target DRAM frequency, and timings are adjusted according to the stored profile settings. As this is actually overclocking the memories and AMD cards tend to be sensitive to memory speeds inconsistency, this may lead to black screens or driver timeout. My my recommendation is to try and check to see if this profile is stable by doing some memory testing and checking for the stability. You can try mem test to see if these memory speeds are stable. If you still have issues and you went through all that I showed in this video, maybe you should try an overlay tool that shows the power, the GPU core, the memory speeds, some tool that can help you pinpoint the issue. I use MSI Afterburner for lightweight troubleshooting. I choose what I think is needed to monitor and then check it in game. These kind of tools can help pinpoint bottlenecks and temperature issues. A more comprehensive tool is Hardo Info 64. This has the ability to store logs, meaning you can run a game and then save the logs, the actual game run. And in those logs you will have all the readings from all the sensors on your PC, which sometimes can be overwhelming. So after you start a game run, you need to view the logs. For that I'm using Hardo Info 64 Log Viewer. Now the hard part, and you may ask. How come? Well, you have a lot of readings, and to be honest, you don't really know what to look for. It's like looking for the needle in the haystack. I will probably focus on thermal limit or memory clock or clock speeds, power limits, core voltages or any voltage to be honest. Try to identify power spikes, voltage drops clock speed drops, GPU usage, CPU usage, memory spikes, SSD temperature and temperatures in general to be honest. All these logs contain what you really need, you just need to know what to look for. Now if you manage to get this far, consider subscribing to the channel to help it grow. If you encounter stability issues, make sure to remove any overclocking settings, from GPU to memory and CPU as well. There can be a lot more things to check, but in this video I focus mainly on issues that may arise from switching from a NVIDIA GPU to an AMD one. Pinpointing the problem is the first step needed to fix it. If you didn't find the fix in this video, with patience and help from the internet, you will find the solution. 
Bear in mind that Nvidia is the undisputed market leader in the GPU discrete market and software vendors tend to test more on Nvidia GPUs than on AMD ones, so the latter has to work extra hard for fixing issues. But that doesn't mean that you will not have any issue when switching to a newer NVIDIA GPU as you can see here in this Reddit post. Sometimes the culprit is not the GPU itself but a DisplayPort cable. Or like in this other post, the solution can escape you no matter what you try. Nowadays quality control is done mostly by the end user, so don't exclude that you may have a faulty GPU. Okay. So to summarize, when switching to a newer GPU, there is always a small chance that you may encounter an issue, but a clean Windows installation, coupled with installing again all games, may solve the problem. I strongly advise to disable Windows driver updates and to make sure that you have a proper, modern PSU that can handle power-hungry hardware. If you have encountered other issues and you manage to overcome them, share your experience in the comments below or on Reddit to help other people who may land in the same situation. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Take care and see you in the next one.